Empaths are emotional sponges who absorb other people's feelings into their own bodies. It can be very exhausting for them to be around people. Oftentimes, they are the perfect targets for social and psychopaths because they are the golden fruit of energy that they crave so well. You see, social and psychopathic people are insecure people who need to project their energies out on others because they are afraid of themselves and confronting with it. And the perfect target is the empath. I'm going to give you ways in which you can protect yourself, so stay tuned. Namaste, Sacred Masters. I'm Dr. Ayos Ikehi, Shadow Work NLP Manifestation Coach, and I'm here to help you with your shadow work and manifesting questions, as well as give you tips on new ways you can practice your self-growth. So don't forget to subscribe for Grobovio Numbers on Tuesdays, pick a card shadow work on Thursdays, and shadow work manifesting tips on Sundays, so that you don't miss anything that can improve your life and find your light in the darkness. Today, we are talking about empaths the beautiful souls of this planet who are unwilling targets of social and psychopaths. I'm going to list down traits of social and psychopaths, and I want you to decide if you have been attracting these people into your life. Now, before I do that, I want to first make a claim that goes against the New Age spiritual community, especially those who are in the Law of Attraction doctrine. They said, you attract what you put out, and if you have been attracting psychopaths or sociopaths, there is something you need to work on. While I agree there are ways to work on it, this is still a very dangerous claim because essentially they are victim blaming some of the most beautiful people in the planet without acknowledging the other side of these pathic people. Instead, they blame the empath. How dare they think that empaths manifest that cycles into their life and it is their fault. I want to say that if you've heard this claim, just know that it's not your fault. Remember, social and psychopaths can exist in a spiritual community too. Don't let anybody tell you anything that makes you think it is your fault. Anyone having a problem with my statement, be happy to get into a debate with you about this. So, now that we get victim blaming out of the way, let's look at these people. First of all, we need to understand sociopaths and psychopaths before we find out how to protect ourselves. The difference between a sociopath and psychopath is that sociopaths have a limited and weak ability to feel empathy and remorse, while psychopaths are people with little or no conscience. But while psychopaths can blend in better in environments, sociopaths are more likely to flip out and react violently when confronted. Let's look at some characteristics of a sociopath. See if this resonates with you and if you know people like that. A sociopath is someone who does not care how others feel, and like I said, can behave in ways that are violent and impulsive. They are prone to fits of anger and rage, and when they are aware of their behavior, make a lot of excuses to rationalize their behavior. They have problems maintaining things such as work and family life and are very emotionally detached. They are manipulative, deceitful, and callous. Psychopaths, on the other hand, play their cards better. You can see them in high-level and functioning narcissists. They pretend to care, maintain a normal life, and are very good at faking emotional attachment to pull their victims in. When their victims have fallen for their trap, it is usually too late when they realize in actuality, psychopaths have no ability to form genuine emotional connections, prefer relationships that are shallow and fake, and are very cold-hearted failing to recognize other people's distress. They use the allure of soulmates and accelerated intimacy to seduce and manipulate their victims. Pathic people oftentimes, without knowing it, seek out empaths. This is because empaths are the opposite of these pathic people. Because you are seen as someone who will fulfill their need in a selfless way. In a weird way, an empath attracts a social or psychopath because they are each other's shadow self. The pathic person who craves attention, respect, wealth, and fame with no empathy to anybody has a shadow side, which is empathy, while the empath who is intuitive, creative, thoughtful, and caring, their shadow side is the pathic person. Thus, the best way to repel pathic people is through shadow work. 
understanding your shadow side so you can regain mastery and control over it. But let's look at ways you can protect yourself from the sociopath or psychopath. Perhaps you are already in a situation right now and need to find strategies. The first two rules when dealing with them is 1. No, you cannot fix them. 2. Don't make agreements or deals with them. Now that we got that out of the way, I'm going to divide the solution into two segments. The first segment includes how you can protect yourself and strategies for yourself and the second segment is dealing with them. It is important to note first that you should deal with yourself first before you deal with them. Let's go over the first segment. The first segment is essentially very light shadow work you can do for yourself. Since your shadow side is the pathic person, you must thus be able to look into the shadow side which is the opposite of your empath personality. The minute that you feel a change in mood, usually because you're absorbing someone's energy, you need to do a simple query whether this energy is yours or someone else's. One way is to excuse yourself from the situation for just a little bit and see if this energy dissipates. If it's gone, it is definitely not yours. But if it's you, it will still be there. Use this time to sit with your emotions and watch it slowly pass away. There are many things that can trigger you, but you must sit with these feelings. Otherwise, they become repressed and stored away into your shadow. By healing this issue, you are less likely to absorb the same emotion from others. It's like taking a flu vaccine to train your body's immune system. If you are unable to excuse yourself from the situation, try some breathing work. Slowly and deeply inhale and exhale to expel negative energies. Breathing is known to circulate negativity out of your body, which is why it's the number one thing we do in meditations. You can use mantras such as return to sender, return to sender, return to sender. Breathe these toxic energies out of your lumbar spine in your lower back. The spaces between the lumbar vertebrae are conducive to helping you eliminate unhealthy energies. Use visualizations of these energies leaving your body and watch it slowly go away. This is called shielding visualization and is a quick way to protect yourself by blocking it out. When you finally remove yourself from the situation, detox with water. Dissolve the stress by immersing yourself in water. An Epsom salt bath is amazing because it provides magnesium which is calming. Remember, you must find ways to get a long time to regroup, especially in nature. If you're in a situation where it's family members, practice non-confrontational ways to set limits and boundaries. Now that you know what you can do to protect yourself, here's how you can deal with them. The first thing to do with psychopathic and sociopathic people is to question your relationship with them. Ask yourself, what do I get out of them? Do you need financial support? Or perhaps you share children together? You can check out my video on dealing with toxic people on this link or in the description box below. But it's very important that you at least watch it. I'll post it at the end of this video as well since we still have some tactics to go through. One of the things I did cover in that video was to find your support system. This is important when dealing with these people because your friends can really give you some perspective in all of this. Oftentimes, when you are close to a pathic person, you have a hard time seeing things in an objective way. But to your friends, it's obvious. Remember, always expect the worst from these people. You are the best thing to have happened to them until they have drained your energy, then you are useless. Most of the time, these pathic people will never believe they're doing anything wrong and it won't change because it will destroy their fragile psyche. If you can, pull away from them as early as possible. It is not only your mental health, but to those you love around you. Like I said in my first two rules, know you can fix them and don't make agreements and deals with them. This includes arguing with them to see the truth. You will never win. They are incapable of seeing their own flaws. Only licensed professional help can assist them in changing. But even then, this is years and years of programming for a personality disorder and they have to want it deeply. Which I've seen in maybe 1% of the case, although 
about 99% of them can fake it very well for the sake of keeping an empath around just for a little bit longer. Remember, you are a pure and wonderful being, used in some sick game for another's fragile ego. You don't have to change either. Doing some shadow work helps with your clarification, but also know that you can practice a different kind of compassion for them. Instead of seeing them as crazy, neurotic, and dangerous people, see them as weak souls with a fragile self-esteem that makes them unable to love themselves because of all that self-aggrandizing. You can feel this way without engaging with them. Nothing will bring them happiness, genuine and sincere happiness. Use that knowledge to be compassionate that this is a tragic way to live. This makes it easier to soften your heart as you pull away because you don't want your life to fall into a pit of despair when you take their energies with you. But remember, do pull away. Who knows, maybe that might be a wake-up call for them. Before we go, I want to share with you a bonus method dealing with these pathic people, and it's called the Jaguar Protection Meditation. This is for when you need extra protection in your situation, such as negative energy coming at you too fast. The Jaguar is not only a fierce and patient guard who can keep toxic energy and people away, it is representative of power, ferocity, and valor. Symbolically, it represents the power to face one's fear or to confront one's enemy and is linked to the Roman god Bacchus or Dionysus in Greek. So. In a calm meditative state, practicing your breathing as I told you before, call on to the spirit of the jaguar to protect you. Feel her presence enter your energy field, encircling it, and protecting you from negative forces trying to get through. Picture the grace and beauty of this animal, in its ethereal form patrolling around you, protecting you with a beautiful, fierce, loving eyes, sleek body, graceful and purposeful. Feel it enter into your body and become one with you. Remember this feeling. Remember this power. Give thanks to your inner Jaguar and know that you can call on her when the time of need comes. Remember, toxic people have to be handled differently. I understand for many people that oftentimes your situation may feel that you cannot just walk away. If that's the case, as I promised, I'm linking this video again for how to deal with toxic people. Do watch it, it'll give you some tips on that. I'll meditate on your journey. Namaste.